Yo, this is Haydan, and today I'm going to be breaking down my latest single, Last Time, featuring Emily Rachel. So this is actually my first release of the year. Happy 2023, everybody. This is how the project file ended up looking at the end of it all. As you can see, I've got kind of two areas. Um, we've got the radio edit and the actual full extended version of the track on the right hand side. I used to actually have two separate files for these sort of things so often I would start with the extended version of any song however because this was a bit more of a commercial vocal track I actually started with the radio edit first so this this track actually was started in July last year and it didn't start with Emily's vocals uh, I actually had like a demo vocal Say you really want me, want me Tell me that you need me, need me Give me all your reasons for leaving but don't so that was the original like intro to the song. Uh, I'll just skip it ahead so you can hear some of the actual like shots that were ended up ended up being used originally. The rest of the song, you know, re repeats pretty much using them similar elements. Originally, like, I was quite happy with that. However, what became a problem was this was such an old sample that it'd been used so many times across many different tracks. It just obviously wasn't original. Really, because this started in July, I actually can't remember where the, the track began. I guess because it's a Piano House song, it started from the piano. So we'll go, we'll start there, really. If we look at the actual mid air, it's pretty much the same all the way through. The, the whole track is in C sharp minor. But yeah, the, the actual chord progression stays exactly the same throughout the entirety of the track. Uh, so how did I make this piano? It's actually several layers and I did use addictive keys at the start but I didn't have the actual full version, I had uh, the demo version so that's why I then froze it down. So we've got a typical M1 house piano. And that's got stuff like OTT on it. I really like to do this on pianos to just bring out the high end a little bit more if I take that off. Just really helps bring out the top end of the piano. Uh, then there's an analog lab piano on it as well, doing the same thing. So there's OTT on that as well. And then the addictive keys is just an extra layer underneath. Uh, and then we've got a lot of processing going on across the whole piano chain. So we've got a bit of compression. Some EQ, and I, I forgot to kind of mention that on there, there's some EQ as well uh, across all the pianos. You know, and then across the group again, just touching the sound up some more. Uh, and as you can see here, right at the end, we're getting rid of some resonating frequencies. So as you can see here, we've got another channel or like a duplicate of it. Uh, that's the wet signal. So we've got delay, reverb, that compressor I don't believe is actually doing anything. But then inside, it's in another group actually, uh, and that's just because there's a, a reverse piano, which again is just a shot that was then changed into audio and reversed. And then like I said, these are in uh, another piano group, again, doing some more EQing, but mid-side in queuing. The auto filter is just the effects that's happening throughout the song. Uh, just to add some interest here and there and then we've got kickstart 2 on it as well So as I said from the start this was kind of the main element of the track to begin with as soon as I got that kind of chord progression down I would have then moved on to some of the other elements and it was probably the kick and bass after this which again it's going to be pretty simple because it, the pattern follows the piano bass notes so it's the same kind of pattern and there's a few little tweaks here and there you know having some notes be a different octave and then yeah it's two it's actually two layers so so we've got the sub bass and then we've got the typical M1 bass line that you hear. So if we listen to the simple sub. Uh, if we look at the serum patch, it's just, yeah, that's kind of modified sine wave. Uh, I've, uh, the way I did this was I would have gone in and got the basic 
shape and then this little uh, edit tool here and then I've just kind of gone on the white lines and then just done this to shape it. Essentially what that's doing is it's adding more harmonics to the sound. It gives it more presence on speakers such as your iPhone, for example. If we look at the effects then, we've got our bass on it. To be honest, you know, I've been recommended this plugin. I, st I don't know what it does, <laughs> but it, it sounded good. So it's on there. Uh, then we're EQing, uh, rolling off anything over 24 hertz. Sorry, 240 hertz. Putting the sound fully in mono. Compressing. We're just catching any of the different volumes in the notes. And then there's a utility as well, which it's just for like the break, really. Like we wanted, I wanted to keep the sub in there, but I wanted to, you know, lower it by 3 dB just so it wasn't as in your face. And if we look at the pattern, there is ever so slightly different patterns. The actual progression stays the same again. We start off with a sustained bass line to match the piano chords. Then we bring in the actual pattern that matches the piano, but again, it doesn't have the fancy little octave changes or the little double notes. Then we have the little build up and then yeah, we get into the main melody. And then at the break again, we go back to the more simple pattern. Uh, and that's the sub bass. Um, again, this is in a group, so we'll touch on the group in a second. And then we've got the infamous M1 bass line. <laughs> You know, you hear that across a lot of these types of tracks, so that's of course why I've used it. It is just the M1 house split patch. You know, our bass is on it again. We're then rolling off the low end, of course. Uh, anything below 147 starts to fade away. Uh, a little dip at the 300 hertz area. Compression, again, catching any of the loud bits and kind of just squishing it ever so slightly. The filter, just used at the start. Oh, so it's the filter in. And then another EQ right at the end, completely getting rid of anything below 95. And that's the bases. Uh, if we look at the group, you know, we've got the capitator on there, so we're saturating the two. This almost gels them a bit more together. makes them feel more like one bass. Uh, then we've got kickstart on it, the original kickstart. We're letting a little bit come through with the kick. So, you know, we don't. you don't have to have a fully 100% signal. Uh, probably should have had it on the sub, but I mean, it sounds all right. Then, yeah, utility, minus two dB at the brakes. And again, I believe it's the same there. Minus two, but then it kind of gets a little tiny bit louder. And yeah, that's, that's the bass. Now, if we hear that with the kick, we've got a kick made up of two layers, so we've got the main body of the kick. Not a lot going on, just making sure that the kick's fully in mono. We're taking out a little bit of the highs, mainly because we're then using a top kick, taken a loop and just applied the very start of that loop. Pretty much used it as a top layer to the kick. Got saturation happening, we've got glue compression, we've got some EQ. You know, all them effects make it sound like it's all one kick. If we listen to the low end group again all together, uh, we've got some glue compression. It's quite uh, quite aggressive that really, but sounds fine. Using the multiband composition uh, compression as well, I struggle to understand compression at the best of times, let alone using this thing. But I think it was a preset that sounded good. Let's listen to it on and off. So it definitely sounds better. I can't tell you what's going on, so I won't. And then we finally got a limiter. And again, this is probably the wrong way around. The limiter should be at the end. But yeah, you learn and move on. And yeah, the EQ is just taking out the, the low end, isn't it? From uh, making the track a transition to the next section. And yeah, that's the low end. So if we play that with the piano. And my computer can't handle it. But yeah, that's kind of, you know, the main body of the track. That's the main body of any piano house track. You've then, of course, got your drums. I'm going to kind of quickly run over these because if you watch any of my other videos, you know, it's always going to be the same sort of thing. You've got your claps. Uh, the hats, again, there's three groups going on. So we've got the open hat. We've got a shaker. We've got a wide open hat all together. 
shaker, simple one, it's just a loop. EQ'd and got kicked out on it. And then we've got three top layers. And it just adds a little bit more flavor to the actual loop as a whole. Then if we look at the group, you can see that we're actually sending this to a bus. But before I'll talk about that, we'll look at these effects. Uh, decapitators on there, so. Uh, glue compression. Very subtle. Getting rid of the lows that have been brought in from the capitator. And then we've got some effects that are happening to kind of keep the track interesting. So we're just filtering away the drums. There's an endless smile on there as well, which is just adding some reverb and a limiter just to make sure we're catching all those louder sounds. Again, it's not being pushed at all. It's just uh, to cut off anything that might get a little too loud. And yeah, there, that's a quick overview of the drums. We've got the room reverb, which I said before, that's where it's going. That's just a reverb for the entire track. So certain elements across the track use that. It just adds a little bit more to it. It makes everything feel like it's all together. And I've just realized that, yeah, there's a bass reverb. So as you can hear, you know, that's completely dry. And then I send that to a bass reverb. But through a reverb, getting EQ'd, getting compressed from the original bass. I don't actually believe this has been sidechained. No, it should be. <laughs> We've got res on and on, which is another nice little effect. I'm not quite sure where this is being used, so we'll have a quick look. It might be the clap. There you go. I think just throughout the song, we're using that just to add a little bit of interest between the transitions. We go back to the music. What, I'm, what I found at that point, you know, once you've got them elements, you've got the, the kick, the bass, the drums, the main lead, it would have been a case then of adding more elements, making sure that the track overall stays interesting. If we start at the beginning, you know, we've got a couple of extra elements. These came in the, the arrangement, or during the arrangement stage, I should say. We added the flat string just to kind of give some tension. So that string definitely helps with that. And then I still felt it lacked something. So that's when the art got created. It's very atmospheric, you know, there's a lot of reverb going on. It's not meant to stand out, stand in the front of everything. You've got the piano that's doing that. So this is more in the back of the mix. Uh, this was just made with Serum. I believe it's one of the Serum presets. Putting it through the arpeggiator feature. It's still playing the exact same chords as the piano. I've just slapped the ar arpeggiator on it. EQing it, auto panning it, and then some volume automation. A little bit later on in the track, we introduce this kind of string sound. Now, on its own, it sounds terrible, and that's because it's got OTT on it, and you know, some extremely harsh EQ. But in, in the full track, you don't really notice how terrible it sounds. So yeah, this is Labs. Um, it's a free plugin. It's definitely worth getting for strings and just other interesting sounds in general. And we use it for the full end of the song as well as another chord string, which is just a sample. It's a lovely sound. Um, comes from a sample. But those chords don't work with my track. So hopefully you can hear the difference it makes having that in there. It just adds another layer, uh, another bit of interest to the song. FX, I'm not going to go into too much detail. It's just the usual. Uh, you've got uplifters, downlifters, symbols. That's not even a channel. Uh, reverse symbol. A sub boom down. That's probably a little bit interesting. And yeah, they're just EQ'd in the, the normal way. A uh, bit of reverb here and there, a bit of delay here and there. Nothing fancy. The fills, we've got clap fills and the snare roll, very simple. And that's got its own delay effect on it just to help with a transition and bass. Then we've got a simple snare roll. <laughs> bit of OTT on there. Uh, we are automating the sustain so it starts off quite short and by the end you know you can hear the full snare 909 snare that's 
essentially the track. Uh, the magic kind of comes with the vocals. So like I said at the start, you know, we use this kind of demo vocal. It was a splice sample. And I actually I actually did send this to a couple of record labels with that vocal. And the feedback I got was, we like it, but the vocals, we've had a song that's used it before or it's a bit generic. Can you actually maybe work with a vocalist and create something a bit more original? You know, one of them even recommended Where I Look. TikTok's always the best thing at the moment for vocalists, uh, Instagram as well. At that point, I thought, right, this isn't going to get signed with this vocal. That's kind of when I reached out to Emily. I was scouring TikTok and Instagram. I came across her profile. I can't really remember how. I think I might. what I might have done as well uh, is gone through Beatport and gone on the, like, the dance poppy section of it. I've gone through the chart, I've seen some songs that are on there and, you know, the artists that are on there and then I've kind of made a list seeing if I can find their Instagrams or their TikToks and reach out that way, which I did with Emily. I sent her the track with the demo vocal and without so she could see kind of what I was thinking in terms of the song and just to see if she liked it, you know. We got chatting and then she said, you know, do, do you want to work on this? And this is the this is another thing. I looked through a profile. I did a lot of research, really. You can't just message a vocalist that does only R&B songs because uh, it's very likely that they only want to do R&B song. Emily already did house tracks. She also does uh, drum and bass and dubstep tracks so you know she's obviously interested in electronic music then gave her the, the track and said you know can you can you record something to this and yeah I, I, li- I liked what the song was about I liked the way she sang it it just fit it, it, all, it all came together quite nicely so at that point I got hold of the actual vocals that she sent this is the last time I told you twice that I keep trying nothing more only time for goodbye so really nice voice she'd already processed it as well uh, on her side so i didn't have to do a lot to it and i've done this so many times in all my other videos i've just realized i'm not even showing the screen i do apologize Uh, (laughs) um, i'll quickly just show the vocal effects chain again as i was saying before you know we've got the vocal with nothing on it other than kickstart which happens later on in the song uh, we've got some stuff on the group, which I'll talk about later. That whole group's being sent to that vocal effects chain there. Yeah, going back to the reverse effects, what I would have done here is I would have got that little part, I would have re- um, I reversed it, slapped a big long reverb on it, uh, opened up another audio channel and recorded it in. And then you're essentially getting that one area with a big long tail that you can then, you know, do volume automation to. Uh, if I turn these effects off, this is the last you know that that works quite well but i wanted to kind of spruce it up even more so what i've done is i've got an auto pan on there which is essentially being automated down it starts off fast and it gets slower this. got reverb on it again just so it kind of bleeds into the next uh, section and that happens here and there you know just to like i said add interest in the transitions at the start of the song, you know, I had it just as a piano. And I did this with the, you know, the demo vocals as well. You just hear the piano and then the vocal comes in. But what I found after a few listens is it's quite dull. And then the vocal just appears. This is the last time I, touch you. I wanted to gain the listener's attention straight away so right at the beginning you get vocals straight away however they are band passed and they're being automated kind of hints to what's to come and yeah because this is you know this is meant to be commercial song a lot of these songs are very heavy on the vocal so you know looking at this vocal chain here the main vocal it's happening it's happening every eight bars at least every four bars in fact and just to have that kind of intro without it felt very odd but we've then got a little bit going on this is a nice little effects that i've done we turn everything off and play the original so that sounds created with uh, Emily's vocals. Now, again, I can't remember which part exactly it would have been, but it would have been similar to the reverse effect in which I would have found a found a part of the song, I would have recorded it, and then the Ableton reverb has a really nice effect called freeze. And what you can do is play a certain part and then click freeze. You'd get this nice sound, so. 
with that effect that's what i did i found a part of the song did that effect recorded it and then that ended up with this sound i then cut up a section and then just transposed it up for semitones this came from you know in the original idea uh, i use cuts in this and then there's some more a bit later on so I had them ideas already. I knew that to keep the song interesting, it needed something happening every eight bars. So, you know, you've got the main drop that's happened and then eight bars in, we get this effect that comes in. Now, Tantra is where this really comes into play. We're just adding some filtering. If we look at this, we've got this filter here. The sound when it's all the way down is at this level. The sound when it's all the way up is at this level. And then this sound's changing every eighth. And then if we look here as well, we've got another one that's happening to the filter. This one's a bit slower. So, you know, uh, at the four bar there, we're kind of moving up and then we're moving back down afterwards. And this is also affecting the filter. Uh, again, it's only changing it by 13%, but it's, it's a nice sound. And then all together. Another nice little sound. Uh, it almost sounds more like an instrument than it does a vocal. Then finally, we've then got a doubled version of the vocal. Um, and this is just to add a little bit more presence to the, kind of like the chorus. Uh, I dropped it down a full octave. It's supposed to sound like someone else is singing it, but with a deeper voice. Um. Last time, time. Sounds terrible on its own, but you know, all together it sounds pretty good. And then, yeah, that, that that's what's happened. I've then gone through and, you know, like I said earlier, we've got her vocals that I've then chopped up and moved around to kind of work with the song. That's how I got the track in the end. So thank you for watching this. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate you grabbing a copy of this from Beatport or TrackSource or wherever it's online. <laughs> Go stream it on Spotify, Apple Music. Let me know what you actually think about the song in the comments. This was something that I haven't done for a while. I had um, the higher track, but that still felt a little bit more house, tech house. This feels very much more dance pop commercial so let me know what you think it was fun to work on it was fun to work with uh, emila i'm really happy with how this track came about and i'd be definitely interested in working with more vocalists in the future if you are a vocalist watching this you know hit me up said send me some of your tracks and yeah if i like your style you could definitely work on something thanks for watching guys like and subscribe and i'll see you next time